Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Udmunch A7, Marco Valentine, and I'm here pretty late, actually, with my, uh, Book 4, Legend of Korra, Episode 12 and 13 review, because, of course, this is the series finale. I'm finally gonna start calling it the series finale, because I think I've finally come to terms with the fact that it's over, and that's probably why I've been, well, both that and I've just been lazy, and I just started my winter break, so I've just been trying to, like, relax and just do a lot of gaming and a lot of sleeping. Mainly sleeping during the day and gaming during the night, but uh, anyway. So, uh, I've actually, as you can see, I have a friggin' notepad right here full of stuff from both the episodes that I want to talk about. Because, of course, naturally, I know the way I do my reviews, I talk a lot, arguably more than I should, and they end up being, like, 12 or so minutes long. That's just because I still have a lot to say, and I've tried to condense that. Didn't really work, uh, so now I've actually written out a list... This review is still going to be long. There's no way it's not going to be, especially with two episodes to review. There's going to be way too much to talk about. Especially, I noticed there's a lot more stuff in episode 13 that I want to talk about than episode 12. But, uh, still. So, I'm sorry. This is probably going to be a pretty long review. But I'm just going to keep talking about it and hopefully that will entertain you a bit. Uh, so let's start with episode 12. Uh, first thing I wanted to mention was this awesome fight sequences and honestly... This is kind of an across-the-board thing, just these last two episodes, I mean, of course there have been other episodes where the animation quality and just some of these shots that you get during it are just awesome and freaking cool as shit, but, uh, hmm. Especially, like, the fight sequences for one in this episode, like, with everyone freaking teaming up all the freaking airbenders, like Tenzin and his kids and all the other airbenders, like Kai and whatever, he's back too. Uh, so, like, regular Team Avatar, the Airbenders, the Beifong family, all teaming up to try and take down gigantic Kuvira mech, like, all at the same time. It's really cool seeing that awesome teamwork. Basically, like, all the frickin' elements, uh, being used together. Like, not even just Korra using all the elements, just, like, everyone who uses each of the four elements is in that fight trying to take down that mech. It's frickin' awesome as shit. Not to mention that, oh, uh, there's this one shot, I don't know, like, when exactly it happens, but it's when Kuvira, like, lets loose, like, a gigantic spirit cannon blast or whatever, and, like, Korra is on top of a building and she, like, dodges out of the way, and they just see in the background, like, the entire skyline of Republic City get, like, leveled, and a gigantic line of explosion happened behind her, with her, like, looking back at it, I'm like, that would be an incredible, if anyone wants to go back to the episode and if you can screen cap that, that should definitely be like a phone wallpaper, a desktop wallpaper, a laptop wallpaper, anything. It is just such a beautiful and epic as shit looking shot. And that like, wow. Oh my god. And uh, second point I wanted to get to, see if I already spent like two minutes or so just talking about the animation and the fight sequences in this episode. But anyway... Uh, the Verily Engagement. Oh my god, this really was the thing that I've been waiting for so long, but finally Varric got out of his fucking mental dumbass funk where he can't tell if anyone's hitting on them even if they slap him in the face with a note saying, please fuck me. But finally, he gets to the fact that obviously Julie has feelings for him, so he tries to address that initially by, like, telling a story about a pet ostrich horse that he used to have before he got picked up by the circus people. I don't know what he was talking about. But he was trying to get at something that, oh, I loved Mrs. Beaks, which is the name of the, which is the, name of the ostrich horse, but I took her for granted. But then Kuvira's mech start rolling in, so he has to stop the story. So I guess I see where he was gonna go from there, it's just that in that lovable and kind of fucking dumb Varric way. He tells a really ridiculous story when he's trying to get something profound and meaningful, but he just has to go through all this weird, meaningless bullshit first. Uh, but then finally, before suiting up to go fight Kuvira's mech with the hummingbird mosquito mechs, which I'll get to in a second, uh, he finally, of course, gets it in his head that, okay, I need to do this, no bullshit stories, I just need to put my heart on the line and fucking do this right here, or I may never get the chance because I very well might die. Thankfully he doesn't, but he could've, so of course he has to do this. Friggin' Julie 
he's looking flawless with that sexy hair flip. I was like, oh my god, girl, maybe she's born with it. Ah! She is, Julie is gorgeous. But anyway, oh, that engagement. Will, would you do the thing for the rest of our lives? Oh my god, only Varric could freaking ask a woman to marry him in such a way. It is wonderful. He's wonderful, they're both wonderful, they're both adorable, moving on. Uh, like I said, the Hubbingbird Mosquito Mechs. Not a lot to say about this besides the fact that just, they're really cool, like their functionality, like swarming around Kavir's gigantic mech while all the rest of uh, Team Avatar, I guess in this case Team Avatar is basically just like everyone who's against Kuvira. So like all of them are still fighting Kuvira and stuff and trying to distract her while the Mosquito Mechs are trying to like land on her and like burrow a hole through like the platinum coating of the uh, mech, which by the way is uh, why like a lot of people are kind of like, why can't like Su Yin and Lin and all of them just metal bend the mech into like a fucking ball or something? One, that would have been incredibly difficult even for metal benders with their, like, level of skill, especially because there's also a metal bender on the inside who could try to stop them. Uh, and two, because the outer layer of the mech was all made of platinum, which as we all know at this point, is unbendable by even the most proficient of metal benders, even Toph wouldn't be able to get through that. Uh, but anyway. So yeah, it was cool seeing those mosquito mechs, and... The mosquito mechs lead me into my last note about episode 12. Uh, Hiroshi Sato's death, which... Oh my god, got me right here, man. I literally, like, it... Okay, it kind of took me at my surprise. I just wasn't thinking about it at the time. So when it happened, I had to be like... No, fucking wait, did that shit happen? So I fucking rewind... I, sw I swipe back on my phone when I'm re uh, Whatever. I freaking rewound a couple seconds. I rewatched that, and I'm like... Holy shit, okay, that happened. No! Why? No, Hiroshi! Oh, dude. That was, and all this, like, father-daughter shit happening before that, just getting all up in my feels! Oh, man, that hurt. That almost made me cry. Sometimes I try not to cry during things, because I don't want to cry, because I know there's going to be something even more sad that happens later on. Which, actually, there wasn't. This is probably the saddest thing to have happened within the two episodes. Of course, because it was, like, the only death in the two episodes. But still, whatever. Uh, it was really cool, heartfelt, really fucking got me right here, despite the fact that I didn't exactly shed a tear. But still, it was awesome. And thank you, Hiroshi, for all that you have done! Uh, anyway, okay, so... Yeah, moving on into episode 13 now, which I have a lot more stuff to talk about. Let's see, there were like four notes for episode 12. There are, okay, so that's four right there. Nine notes for episode 13 that I want to talk about. Uh, hopefully some of these won't take much time. Because actually one of these I'm going to make an entirely separate video about, and you'll see later on what that thing is. Uh, first thing, cool seeing the inside of the mech. It was really cool, like, seeing all, like, the machinery... And getting to see, like, Lin and Suya and freaking, like, bend the shit out of it and, like, break all the components of, like, the gigantic freaking arm cannon thing. And Kavira, wow, she just ripped off that mech's arm just in order to freaking capture or whatever Suya and Lin. Or actually, no, they were inside the arm, not inside. Initially, when I first watched that scene, I thought they were inside the shoulder joint, but no, they were inside, like, uh... They were, like, right there on, like, the inside of the arm, not there on the shoulder joint. I got confused. But no, so, she trapped them inside the arm, and I threw the arm away. The arm hit a building, and the, like, cannon itself fell somewhere else, which will come into play later on. Uh, but yeah, it was cool, and also, like, the engine room with the gigantic, like, it almost looked like a spirit vine brain. It was, like, weird. It was, like, a gigantic orb, like, th kind of... Not exactly, an or but it was spherical in nature, and it was all, like, viney and stuff, so it looked like a brain, kind of, except it's, like, a power source, not really a control center. That's Kuvira. Kuvira's the control center. But anyway, anyway, that entire sequence was really fucking cool. Uh, second note, Korra on her fucking A-game, going up against Kuvira, holy shit, from the moment that friend Korra burst into the head area, the control center, whatever, of the mech, and friggin' bended those metal- those metal bender dudes out of the way, and she was all up in Kuvira's business from second one. Holy shit. That was an awesome fight. It's like, this 
is not Zaofu. Freaking Korra is about to whoop some Kuvira ass, and she did. Kuvira still put up a good fucking fight, but holy shit, Korra was going at it. Especially when Kuvira, like, took the freaking liquid metal that apparently she was using to, like, control the joints and whatever of the mech itself. When she took that, tried to shoot it, like, at Korra, like, oh, Korra's not as good as a metal bender as I am. Korra's just like, oh, really, is that it? Like, metal bends the freaking like, liquid metal around her and slings it back at Kuvira. I'm like, holy shit, Kuvira, your shit is gonna get fucked, bitch. Oh my god, it was so cool. I am so aggro about this finale. It was so wonderful, but I still have things to talk about, so I'll keep going with that. I know we're at ten minutes now, so I'm gonna try to hurry up. Uh, I really thought Mako was gonna die in that one scene in the engine room where he's freaking shooting up that spirit vine brain I was just talking about, like, full of lightning and stuff, so it'll explode. I'm like, dude, is he gonna die? He's gonna die, isn't he? He's either gonna die in an explosion, or something's gonna happen that kills him. And of course, wow, it was really... It was a little hard for me to watch. I'm like, Mako, no! Why, like Bolin said, you don't need to do this to show how awesome you are. We all know how awesome you are. You're awesome. And he fucking, wow, I proved that friggin' lightning, that fucking giant spirit vine power core thing. And oh my god, like, the lightning, like, kind of coming back into his arm, like, shattering, like, the entire sleeve off his arm. I am pretty sure, like, part of his arm, it looked like part of his arm got, like, a little singed. It, like, his forearm, at least, looked a little bit redder than the rest of his skin. I'm like, holy shit, he is actually taking physical damage from this. And it's kind of weird. I kind of thought to myself, I'm like, well, the whole key of, like, lightning bending is the fact to, like, keep your entire, like, body, like, more, like, the energy flowing through your body, like, in balance to let it flow, like, peacefully, th one arm to the center, like, out the other and that kind of shit. And I'm like, I would have figured that friggin' getting some of that backlash from the lightning from the giant spirit vine might have killed Mako. I'm like, he's, he doesn't seem like he'd be perfectly in balance in a situation like this, he would seem very stressed. So, I don't know how that didn't kill him, but then again, Azula was fucking crazy and imbalanced when she used the lightning bending and stuff, so maybe, I don't know, it's not so much a thing about it. But, whatever. Uh, but yeah, when he got shot full of that, like, purple spirit vine energy, oh my god, I thought he was done for! And then Bolin grabs him, pulls him out of the engine room, and they manage to survive that gigantic explosion. And then he's alive, and I'm like, oh, thank god, man, I thought we were gonna have another one die. Uh, uh but anyway, uh, Kavira goes nuts with the weapon. Yeah, of course, after, uh, aforementioned explosion of the mech, frickin', like, Korra and Kavira get launched to, like, some other place. And, uh, of course, Kavira, like, still trying to be on the run, because, like, no, it's not over yet, even though she's, like, gotten the shit kicked out of her. There's nothing- her mech is in shambles and blown up and destroyed, and there's nothing she can do at this point. But, of course, she tries to run into, like, the Spirit Wilds, which are basically, like, kind of like Central Park of New York, if you want to put that kind of, like, visual spin on it. So she, like, pulls away some of the vines. She sees what, off-camera, is really the spirit weapon. We don't see that until, like, Korra sees it. And holy shit, Korra looking down the gigantic, like, barrel of that fucking spirit cannon was like, holy- I, I'm like, a bitch will not. And then a bitch does. I'm like, holy- she just pushes a lever on that thing. Fires that spirit cannon, Korra only manages, manages to, like, dodge it in, like, a fraction of a second. And, like, fucking Kuvira, I'm like, how did you ever assume that this would go well for you? That po that shooting this weapon point blank into the ground while it's just swinging precariously from vines. How do you think that would go well for you? And so then, of course, uh... Oh, and there's one more thing that I want to mention about that before I go to my next note, which is kind of related to that, but... It's kind of related, but of course, uh, when the spear weapon is like going crazy and like Kuvira is flung off and stuff because it's going out of control, it's going like haywire. Of course, you crazy bitch! How did you think that would work? Like I said, but anyway, uh, so like spear weapon is about to like obliterate her. Korra jumps into the way and fucking like blocks that shit like almost fucking Wonder Woman style, just like blocking it. Oh my god. I don't even know what kind of bending she was using. Some people speculate that she was, like, using air bending to kind of create, like, an air sphere around them. Some other people suggest that she may have been using spirit bending 
to kind of, like, redirect the energy around them. Whatever she was doing, it was fucking cool as shit, and made for another, again, going back to the animation quality, made for another moment that would make a fucking awesome, like, background wallpaper to, like, anything. But, uh, okay, so going, and as a result of that gigantic, like, energy redirection explosion thing, along with all the vines and frickin', uh, giant, like, Republic City Central Park, whatever the fuck it is, like, lighting up, and they're all getting energized and stuff. Big, huge fucking spirit explosion. Winds back, like, implodes back on itself, and then gigantic beam into the air via frickin' Last Airbender finale. Like, turns into a gigantic, another spirit portal. Which, uh, then opens to Kuvira and Korra on the other side in Spirit World. Almost thought they were dead, too. Legit. Almost thought Kuvira and Korra had fucking died in that huge ass blast. Turns out it didn't. I called another bullshit. I'm like, oh, I thought uh, maybe you guys would be dead because now you're suddenly in the spirit world and stuff. But I guess it's like, just because you're in the spirit world doesn't mean you're dead, obviously. We should probably know that by now. Sorry, rearranging my necklace real quick. Uh, wow, we're at 16 minutes. Holy shit. Uh, anyway. So, uh, yeah. I wrote that down as Awesome Spirit Portal Light Show, which is basically what it was, and it was really cool. Again, wonderful visuals throughout, like, this whole book, about this entire series, really, like, not even just Legend of Korra, Last Airbender 2, but whatever. Uh, Verily Wedding. Seriously, again, I'm not really gonna say a lot about this, because I already mentioned this, like, all the cute shit about Verily, or, uh, Jurek, as some people call it, whatever. Verily, actually, oh, sorry, but burps, I had cereal this morning, and so kind of, anyway. Uh, so I'm not really gonna say, like, a lot about that, because what I said about that was already said in, like, the previous scene where, like, friggin' asked her to marry her or whatever. Either way, super adorable, hilarious moments, like, try- uh, Bolin reading the vows, and it's like, uh, to, like, love and to cherish, and to also scrub his calluses on a bi-weekly basis, because it's really not that much that's- Okay, dude, I'm not reading it, I'm like, oh my god. Hilarity ensues. Oh, uh, and anyway, uh, I almost forgot this note, but, uh, and again, it only happens for a second, so I'm not gonna say a lot about it, but it is almost kind of like a personal bias note, but fucking seeing Tano again, and playing the fucking trombone in the band in the wedding, like, after ceremony, whatever, oh my god, as a former trombonist from, like, I don't know, when did I start? I started in, like, maybe third or fourth grade, and then went all the way until the end of middle school, until I got to high school, which I sw opted out for guitar, which didn't really work out, because I'm just terrible at playing guitar. But whatever, just seeing him, like, jamming out on the fucking jazzy guitar, I mean, jazzy, what am I talking about? I'm getting guitars and trombones mixed up now. On that jazzy fucking trombone, that was so cool. I'm like, oh my god, the instrument I used to play, that's so cool. Anyway. Okay, so, uh, another little thing, uh, not much to say about this either, because it's more of, like, kind of a setup thing. Because, of course, like, uh, Mako and Korra talking with Prince Wu, and Prince Wu's, like, and Korra's like, oh, sorry, you ready to go back to Bossing Se and lead your people? And Prince Wu's like, you know what, actually, I've been thinking of dissolving the monarchy and kind of making, uh, the Earth Kingdom more into something like the United Republic has. So he's gonna have and turn the Earth Kingdom into a democracy, and of course, like, Korra's like, Oh, well, whatever changes come with that, you know I'll have- you'll have my support and I'll help in any way I can. And I'm like, yeah, set up for the comics, because I'm assuming there's probably gonna be them after they finish, of course, like, some stuff with the last Airbender comics, so that's still happening. But anyway, yeah, it's cool to see that even though the television series itself is over, that we're still gonna get juicy bits in the form of comics. And of course, that may, like, go shed more into light on some other things that we actually didn't end up knowing. Like, for example, Su Yin's father is still a mystery, whereas we know Lin's father is some dude named Kanto. Who the fuck knows about that? Uh, and my last note for, uh, episode 13, which, as I said at the beginning of this video, I will make an entirely separate video on, because this video is about to hit 20 minutes, and it would go on for another 10 minutes if I even decided to talk about half of the things I want to say about this last note, but Korasami wins the Legend of Korra series. I'm sorry, 
I know tons of people are going to be like, oh no, there wasn't enough like setup or staging or like they just kind of made it happen out of nowhere. Or no, I wanted Makora to happen. Screw Korosami. They don't mix together. The Korra and Mako do the things and whatever. And I'm like, listen, people, I can't say anything about this right now because people will be like wanting to strangle themselves watching 20 minutes of me talking about stuff, about really anything. So I'll make an entirely different video about this Korosami moment in order for you to lash out at me in the comments and disagree, or maybe agree with me, please? Because actually, it does make a lot of sense, and while I can't go into it now, I will make the video probably sometime, maybe a little later this week, that I will try to explain my personal take on it, and I'll actually give some evidence from the from previously in the series to kind of back up my claim. But until then, all I gotta say is, dude, Legend of Korra is... it's over, man. The Avatar, the TV series itself, is done. Brike is moving on to hopefully do... hopefully do more animation. I'm pretty sure they're not just, like, done. It's like, oh, Legend of Korra is done, we can fucking retire now. No, I'm sure they're going to keep making, like, other animation projects later on in the future. But as far as Avatar is concerned, all we got right now are the comics, man. Television, Dungeon Rings. Well, it makes me sad to say so. It's done, man. And, uh, wow, it's gonna be, it's like, it really was, I would have to say, one of my favorite anime, like, the entire series as a whole. Last Airbender and Legend of Korra, I don't like people, like, making them out to be like, oh, this isn't as good as this, or this was better than this, or whatever. I'm like, dude, they're part of the same universe, but their own, but they're their own respective shows. I'm like, both of them are wonderful. And one of these days, I swear to you here, I am going to invite tons of my friends over and have like a giant viewing party. I'm talking about Boy in the Iceberg to the Last Stand. We're going to watch the entire Avatar series over the span of, I'm assuming, a couple days, actually. So, uh, yeah, until that happens, I don't know, maybe I'll make a vlog whenever that happens. Probably not, because I'll take forever. <coughs> uh, sorry, whenever I do that voice, I really get coffee. Uh, speaking of which, I should probably go drink coffee because I'm still kind of sleepy. But anyway, uh, that is the end of this video. I'm sorry, I really noticed I haven't been making a lot of vlogs recently, and there is some stuff I'd actually want to talk about, but I've just been kind of lazy and stuff about things. But I swear I'll make a few more vlogs, including that Korosami thing, later on this week. Uh, gameplay is still happening, still posting Assassin's Creed Unity. I decided that because, like, this gameplay has, like, 49 episodes to it. So I think when I get around episode 25, I'm going to start uploading, uh, like, a different gameplay series. Kind of just have two things happen at the same time, but, like, not so I'll run out of, uh, I don't know, content too quick. So anyway, but that's it for this review, man. See you, Avatars! Yeah!